Hi and welcome. Thanks for joining us as we take this opportunity to look at how we can utilize Office 365 on our iPads. So let's get started with today's lesson. Okay, so let's take a look at just the overview of Office 365 on your iPad and where you can access the apps, access the programs, etc. Now, to start with, let's just take a look at the range of applications that Microsoft do for the iPad that enable you to access things. You'll see that there's a lot already downloaded on my devices, also a lot more that you might want to utilize. So we have direct access on your iPad to these applications. We can also access our Office 365 account through Safari by going to office.com and obviously signing in, and you'll see those applications are also replicated here. So there are multiple ways for you to be able to access things. Um, and we're just gonna go over you know, just what the apps are that you have access to as part of Office 365, what different things can do for you. Uh, not a full on how to use each one of those apps, but just you know what exists within this platform and how you can utilize it on your iPad. So from this point of view, if office.com online, you'll see that we have access to Outlook, which is our email. So we can simply just tap into this and go into our emails. We have our storage through OneDrive. Again, I can access that online. I can access this on any device. Word, which people will be familiar with as your word processing tool. And there's things that we can do in this and we're gonna show them in a different video to just go over the, the kind of details of, of Word and some of the accessibility features that you'll notice. Excel from a, a spreadsheet point of view, data analytics, uh, lots and lots of things that you can do within there. PowerPoint as a presentation tool. One note that we've looked at in the form of class notebook in previous videos around that creation of a shared learning space for your students. SharePoint, which kind of acts behind the scenes in lots of ways to, to kind of tie lots of these things together. Teams that we've done a lot of videos on. Uh, in terms of that setup, that communication with our students, assignments, etc. Sway, which is a really, really nice online tool. There isn't an app for this, it used to be, but now this is just sits online and we'll, we'll take a look at this in more detail in a future video, but it's a great way of creating um, kind of like bespoke uh, presentations that kind of merge with uh, a website. You know, it's, it's just a really, really nice way to present information. Forms that again, there's a there's a whole video that we'll do on forms, and again we've talked about how this ties in with Teams and from an assessment point of view. Delve, which is a nice way just to kind of see what's going on at a snapshot from all of your different connections that you have with different people. So again, just different ways that people like to, to have a look at how uh, the communication and the the collaboration that you're doing works with other people. And then Planner, which obviously some schools are going to use this, some schools might not use this, but again, it's just useful to know that it's there as an option for you. The other things on the page that you'll notice are the you know, things that you, you might want to look at because it's just recommended, uh, you know, the AI behind the scenes kind of has, has identified it as something that you might want to take a look at, it might be uh, relevant and recent stuff. Uh, the list of the recent things that you've opened, um, things that are just in your recent folders that you've opened and then your frequently visited SharePoint. So it's just kind of your one-stop kind of home page for all of those things. Another thing to notice about Office 365, if we go to all apps, we'll see that these there's so many more things within this that you, you have. We've looked at lots of these things in previous videos. You'll see that Whiteboard exists down here. We've, we've talked about Whiteboard before. Uh, we'll talk about you know the, the addition of Stream and what you can do with Stream in future videos. But then even beyond that, there are a lot of other apps that you can integrate into your Office 365 uh, setup. We'll have a look at Flipgrid in separate videos. It's a great tool for education. Um, really, really nice way of utilizing video to support your students. And also thinking, you know, you might not be using Teams for the whole assessment piece. You might be using something like Shobi, and Shobi sits here alongside Edmodo as well, also do that whole setup. So you can kind of build on what your normal setup is. One thing to identify here is that this all depends on your school's setup, your school's instance of Office 365 and what has been turned on and what hasn't been turned on for you to use at any one time. Okay, so if we go to, let's take Word for example as our first uh, port of call, let's jump into Word and take a look at Word Online. So this is our online setup. So I'm doing this through the Safari browser. You can see I've got access to previous files. I've also can create a new document um, and I've got templates that I can utilize here. If I cl click on new template, uh, so new document, it's gonna open in a new page. 
and you'll see the familiar kind of word uh, tools across the top word processing you know i can just start to type directly on this um, and utilize those uh, tools directly on here now the nice thing about how this works on my ipad is that i also have access to this through the app so if i just type in something on this page and then i go back so i'm just going to come out of this and go to the app instead the beauty of having the apps is these are designed to be to be working in this way so we can see that this document um you know across the top are things that i've recently been working on this document here though is the one that i just created a second ago it's instantly now put it into the app for me i can go into it on the app and here's that document it's a li little bit uh, more robust in terms of how I can work within the app on this. Um, obviously I have access to things like the drawing tool easily here. Um, I've got my Apple Pencil so I can just start to write directly onto the screen. Um, I've got access to all of the things and this is obviously designed as an app to be working on the mobile device. So it's just really, really simple way to access those things. But really simple to know that I can jump between working online and working in that kind of app environment as well so that works within um, word on your device obviously you can do the same with powerpoint so if i jump into powerpoint now again i have all those templates that i can choose from i can start a new one on the device create the the look and feel of whatever i want to do but again i might find that i have some better controls within the app i'm writing better because i just said better so if i jump into the app same process here. Um, that one. Here's the file I just literally just created then. Um, it's just probably going to play catch up because I've jumped between one to the other really, really quickly. Um, there we go. So as these start to tie up with each other, they should start to work as one. So I jump back here. Hopefully this is the same presentation that I was creating. I mean, I know you wouldn't necessarily work like this, sort of jump between the two, but you can see there that, you know, I wrote better on this one, access to certain tools on the other one. It just shows how it just really, really integrates between doing this on my iPad or if I was doing this online on a different uh, device altogether, I can still collaborate um, in, in terms of just working on my own thing in two different ways. Again, similar, you know, the, the settings across the top are very similar. If we just go to a comparison view, if I open PowerPoint alongside, I go to that presentation um, on here, we can see that we still have those, those ability to, you know, access those things. Some people just find it's going to be easier to work in this way because, you know, I might be able to drag and drop things in a slightly different way. Um, for example, if I went to open Safari here and I wanted to find a picture Let's have a look. Um, let's search for a picture of cars. Go to some images. I want this picture of this car. I can just simply drag and drop, take that across, and add that into my uh, my document. Now that's that's a lot easier to do it that way. I could try exactly the same thing, doing that in the online version. You see, I've already got that one picture there. It's taken it straight away. I can drag it and drop drop it across to here so you get exactly the same functionality um, to do it whether you're doing it on your uh, within the iPad app or doing it in Safari um, so you know just a really really neat way of just using those apps that you might be familiar with but taking the the enhancements of maybe doing it on an iPad slightly differently where I can have that split screen approach so let's just have a look then at some of the other things um, that kind of transfer between Office 365 through the web and Office 365 that exists on my device that like we said we, we noticed these uh, apps before SharePoint and stream all exist here um, so from the teaching point of view doing this on your iPad you know just gives you different access the benefit of having the apps obviously is that I can access those apps on the device um, I don't need to use the internet which means I can start to access those things anywhere um, and also like we've just shown with split screen I can start to integrate different apps across different things. What's really, really nice with that is if I open PowerPoint, if I then open Word alongside it, 
what we can do here is we can take some of that information maybe that I've used in my Word document. This could be something where I've drafted a letter or I've drafted a piece of writing. And over here, I want to create something from that piece of writing. I want to turn it into uh, something that I'm going to present to an audience or I'm going to do something kind of more creative with that writing. Again, I can just simply operate between the two screens. I can select the text from the one side. Let's just grab that text, uh, grab all of it. And again, I can grab and hold it and drag it across to the other side. So you can you can imagine from a student's point of view, here's my drafting and here's my kind of finished product. And using the iPad in this split screen way with the Office 365 apps kind of gives me just a different way of working across the two. So there we go. Just a very, very quick overview of what you can do with Office 365 on your device, how and where everything kind of lives, the additional apps that you can utilize and the fact that it all works perfectly well on your iPad.